Hello everyone, I'm Nini FC, home for all of your Chelsea and football related talk. And today I'm doing a transfer daily video. And in this video today, there's a lot of things to get down to. Now, to kick things straight off, I'm going to be speaking about Alexandro. Now, yes, I've done a video already. There's been a lot of reports without real, you know, without much real uh, evidence behind anything. And allegedly, if you're going to take the Daily Star's words, they're saying that we've agreed a 60 million pound bid. It's not a 60 million euro bid, a 60 million pound sterling bid. That's the reports that they're saying. Of course, I wouldn't really put anything into it or think much about it, in my opinion. Uh, we know the Daily Star aren't very reputable. But anyway, what really is interesting is that uh, Morata, again, has said that Juventus are willing to sell Alexandro if he wants to leave. So they've reinforced that statement again. And he said that they don't believe in keeping a player against their will. They said that there's been players before in the past, obviously speaking about the likes of Vidal, Tevez and Pogba, who wanted to leave. And they didn't make it difficult for the players. As long as the clubs paid the, the fee they wanted, that was it. And they're saying that uh, Morata has said that they've received a suitable fee for Alexandro. That could be a statement that could be lost in translation because I've actually tried to look deeper into it and find more reports to really, you know, find out if he actually said that. And it seems to vary. So I'm not really looking into that that deeply. But... It's definitely been reported that Juventus are looking at a replacement for Alexandra, and that's Dalbert, another Brazilian who's playing for Nice, uh, who's a, a left wing back. And this guy is a fantastic player. He came from Vitoria Gumareish. He signed for Nice last season, tore it up in Ligue 1. It's been fantastic. If anything, I'm feeling very confident, I must say, that a, a deal for Alexandra will be happening this summer. So. I know I've been called crazy a lot of times for even suggesting it on Twitter, but I'm thinking it's going to happen. And I think it's literally just going to fall down to a green, a transfer fee. Because I think when it comes to green for wages for Alexandro, that's going to be the standard thing. Now, anyway, moving on to the next report. It seems that Matic might be going to Manchester United this summer. And what does that mean for Chelsea? Well, like I've been saying for a while, we've been linked with Bakayoko. And the only way Bakayoko will come is if we sell a midfield player. And it seems that Masic is the more realistic option when it comes to a departure at the club this season from midfield. Now, I know a lot of people might be happy thinking, thank God Masic is going to be out of our hands. But in my honest opinion, I think that Masic is a superior player compared to Bakayoko. Now, I know Bakayoko is young. He hasn't completed more than 100 games yet in his career. I think he's around, you know, 80-something like throughout his entire career for us. But in terms of passing ability, I think Matic is better. You know, Matic creates more chances. Uh, I think he's got a better first touch. And also with Matic, there's a lot of the things he does when he doesn't have the ball. And it's those kind of things that get overlooked so frequently in football. Now, Matic without the ball is always in the right position. He uses his body really well. And he doesn't give away a lot of fouls, which I really like. Bakayoko, I know he's only 22, 23. So it's understandable why, you know, why he might not exactly be the Polish article at the moment. But I've seen Monaco play quite a lot this season, I have to say. And when I've seen him play in midfield, he's been good. But of course, you know, in that Monaco midfield, they're playing in a with a two-man midfield with Fabinho and Bakayoko Bear. They have to do a lot of running. They have to shield um, the the back four. And one weakness that I've noticed with Bakayoko is that any ball that comes in from behind him, he just isn't aware or isn't quick enough. And to me, it tells me that his reading of the game isn't perfect just yet. Um, of course, sometimes I think... I know that people have been saying that you know he's great going forward. He's better in an attacking sense compared to Matic. But... Anytime it comes to fans thinking about what attacking football means, it always seems to fall down to if a player can run with the ball. Now, it's a nice bonus to have, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's attacking. Sometimes with midfield, the most important thing they have to do is what they do with the ball. And I kind of think that Bakayoko isn't as progressive with his passing options. And 
I think that if he was to come to Chelsea, it's going to be more of the same. And really, it's not going to be an upgrade. Now, of course, he's nearly three, four years younger than Matic. So, of course, he can make progress in his development. And at the same time, I'm thinking Chalaba is pretty similar as well, but seems to have a more progressive range of passing. Uh, I know that a lot of fans talk about Conte possibly developing Bakayoko, but if he can do that, why can't he develop Chaloba? Why can't he develop Chaloba to be the player he wants defensively so he can add to what he has in his, uh, you know, in his attacking play? That's something to think about. But I'm thinking, on the other hand, Matic going to Manchester United might be what he needs because the first two seasons he was with us, he was effectively playing the Kante role before Kante was even in the Premier League. You know, he was playing in much more advanced positions, winning the ball higher up, playing those passes to Fabregas to help dictate the ball and dictate the tempo. And he did that really well. Now, um, of course, uh, two seasons before that disastrous season under Mourinho, he was starting to get a bit of a bad reputation, which I thought was really unfair because really he was left isolated in midfield. And really, it was the fault of the tactics. And last season, he was playing a completely different role. You know, he tended to have to babysit the left-hand side and play much deeper. He wasn't allowed to get forward as much. So in turn, that meant that he had to focus more on what he did with the ball instead of what he's more comfortable in doing, which is, you know, carrying the ball, winning the ball higher up. Um, I think he, you know, he had a good season. It wasn't anything amazing. But this is why I think that if Matic was to go to United, he would be able to play his more natural role. And I think Matic would probably enjoy that for his, you know, for the sake of his footballing career. And at the same time, the alleged fee that we'd be receiving would be £40 million, which is going to be like a nearly a £20 million profit on what we originally paid for him. So I think purely in terms of what's best for the player, I think a transfer to Manchester United might be what's good for him. Is Diego Costa going back to Atletico? Well, it seems like that. And logically, I think it makes a lot of sense. Now, Costa has stated in interviews that there's only two clubs that he loves. That's Chelsea and that's Atletico Madrid. And I think that, you know, to respect what Costa's done for us, you know, he's he's helped get us two Premier League titles in three years. I think that we should help negotiate a fee back to Atletico. Now... I know the alleged fee that we want is 53 million. Originally, the club wanted 88 million. And I really think in terms of Atletico being able to afford it, that's going to be no problem because Costas a striker Atletico have needed for years. And he's one of the big reasons that they haven't challenged as much for trophies since his departure. And I think when he goes back there, they'll be a force to reckon with. Plus, I think that'll be a very easy negotiation. It just depends on whether Conte isn't going to put him in the Champions League squads and he's actually going to wait until January to let Costa move back to Atletico. And I think that is going to be the case. Now, just to end this video, we've actually made our first signing of the summer so far and that's signing Daishon Redan from Ajax, the young 16-year-old forward from their youth team. If I'm being honest, I'm surprised why Redan would want to leave Ajax at this moment in time. They've shown that they're one of the most promising youth teams in Europe. A lot of their youth players from the academy are getting a lot of opportunities now and he was actually seen as one of the next ones to make a breakthrough. So it seems strange that he's been so impatient and decided to sign for Chelsea. But it seems that he's wanted to leave Ajax for a while. Last season he was close to signing for Manchester United when this was before uh, Mourinho was here and when Van Gaal was at the club. So it looks like he's finally got his wish and sealed away from Ajax. Again, it surprises me why the kid would want to leave so early. He's got a chance to be able to develop further and actually get game time. Because I heard this season, as I was doing my reports, that he stepped up into the under-19 team. And he's actually alternating between the under-17 and under-19. And he's seen as one of Alex's top strikers in their academy. Uh, the profile of the player is he's right-footed, leads the line very well, but he's very comfortable playing on the left side of the of the wing and playing up front and another key thing with his ability is that when he dribbles with the ball he doesn't dribble with his head down he's got his head up and he's got a great reading for the game his movement's supposed to be fantastic as well as his finishing 
So it seems that like we've got a very exciting player, but again, it's very hard to really assess a player without really seeing him. Of course, I saw some of his highlights, but that doesn't tell you enough about a player, in my opinion. And the description I gave you, you could use that for tons of players in Europe. So again, it seems like it's something for the Youth Academy. But anyway, you guys, that's going to conclude the video for today. I'm going to have another video up tomorrow because as I've been making this video, there's reports that a fee has been agreed for Van Dijk. Now, I've got a lot to talk about. I'm not going to extend the length of this video by talking about it in this video. So here are my thoughts on whether we need Van Dijk and whether that's the right signing that we need for the club. So that should be a very interesting one. But anyway, you guys, thank you for watching this video today. Please, in the description below, you'll find my Twitter handle there. Of course, get through to me. Also, like, comment, and if you're new, subscribe. Anyway, I'm Nini FC, signing out.